We have new data from two diabetics who received a potential cure for diabetes. Vertex Pharmaceuticals shared the data from the first ever stem cell therapy trial just a few days ago at the ADA conference. The first participant in this trial is Brian Shelton, type 1 diabetic for many years. We now have Brian's data for the first 270 days of this trial. So let's have a look. He started the treatment with HbA1c of 8.6%, time in range blood glucose of 40% and a daily insulin insulin dose of 34 units. This is not terrible but also not very good because as we all know the recommended HbA1c for a diabetic is below 7% and the recommended time in range is above 70% and his main problem were episodes of extremely low blood sugars which he could not feel. According to the doctor who is supervising the therapy Brian could not work and he had crashed his motorcycle several times all due to hypoglycemic events. So let's have a look what happened after four months of this trial. Between days 120 and 150 his daily insulin dose dropped from 34 to less than 3 units. Time in range blood glucose rose from 40 to more than 80 percent and the HbA1c dropped from 8.6 to 6.7%. By the way, the source of this information is Andrew Briskin's article from the Dad Tribe website, and I will put the link to the description below so that you can follow along. But don't go anywhere because this gets even better. After eight months of his therapy, between days 240 and 270, the daily insulin dose dropped to zero units. The time in range rose to 99.9% and the HbA1c dropped to 5.2%. And these are values of a healthy person. This guy takes no more insulin and his numbers are perfectly normal. So hit that like button if you like those numbers and you would like to get them without taking any insulin. Wouldn't it be great? Everything is working fine. My numbers are great. That's really amazing and it makes me feel very hopeful. Not only does he say his numbers are great and everything is working fine, but he can also go ahead with an unplanned ice cream. We all would have to plan for that. And if we want to get an ice cream treat that is not planned, we would need to get an extra insulin or something like that quite a bit before we even eat that ice cream. Having that kind of flexibility of eating whatever you want and to whenever you want is great. And look at how much less his blood sugars fluctuate. You see eight months into it there are no more spikes. The blood sugar is almost flatline. Before we look at the data of participant 2 let me tell you a bit more about this therapy. The therapy is called VX880 and the reason why it's considered so promising by the experts it is this is the first beta cell transplant where the cells are derived from the stem cells. The beta cells in this therapy are manufactured and programmed. These cells are basically told what to do by the researcher and they are infused into the blood flow near the pancreas. All the other research groups before used islets from human donors, which is a different approach. We seem to be switching from a biological cure to a technological cure. And it seems that this treatment has a good potential to become a functional cure for type 1 diabetes. Now let's look at participant number 2. Participant number 2 started with HbA1c of 7.5%, time in range blood glucose of 36% and a daily insulin dose of 26 units. These also are not ideal numbers, but you can notice that participant 2 numbers are a little bit different from participant 1. Starting HbA1c is a bit better than participant 1, but his time in range is a bit worse. So it looks like participant 2 might have suffered from even more hypoglycemic low blood sugar events. So let's look what happened 4 months into this. Between day 120 and 150, the daily insulin dose of this person dropped from 26 to 18 units. Time in range blood glucose rose from 36 to 52% and the HbA1c dropped from 7.5 to 7.1. We don't have the data for the 8 month period yet for participant 2. But when we compare the improvements after 4 months into this, the improvements for the second participant are not as staggering and as fast when compared to the first participant. They are still looking very promising though, especially because during the first phase of the trial, Vertex only gave the patients half of the dose that they expect to be needed for this therapy and that's quite common in these trials just to keep things safe. Now I'm no expert in this area but it would seem logical that if you increase the dose to double the results might be even better. By the way the dose gets typically increased in the next rounds of the trials and that's exactly what the company is trying to do and to get an approval from the regulator for. Unfortunately the regulator the 
FDA paused this trial just a month ago because they concluded that there was not enough evidence to support increasing dose of beta cells to the full plant amount. What? Now, according to the article from Diatribe, Vertex is working with FDA and they're hoping to resolve any concerns soon to be able to continue with the trials. And I'm really hopeful because the results seem promising so far. The thing is, it will still take years to get such cure for diabetes to be approved. And it will take even longer to get it to more people. But it's important to be prepared for that. You want to be in the best shape possible to be able to do the transplant when it's available. And that's why you should not ignore this video and to watch to find out how to lower your blood sugar safely in less than one hour. If you like what I do, check out my Patreon site where you can watch bonus content, interact with me one-on-one, -on -one, and you can support me by a small monthly donation. And if you'd like me to help you navigate your diabetes journey, book a coaching session with me. Ciao!